marketplace.com. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. This is Paul Catalina's Top 5 at 555. Presented by Slapsticks Comedy Club. For ticket information, go to slapstickscomedy.com. Sikkim 365 Radio. 365 Sports on YouTube. Top 5 at 5, brought to you by Slapsticks Comedy Club. Also, while I've got the chance, just a couple things. One, thank you to BetUS, uh, who is our newest sponsor here on, on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Uh, use promo code Sikkim125 for a 125% bonus on your deposit of $100 or more. And thank you to the Mustafa family for uh, putting up with me and letting me do this show here in their house today. Imad, Linda, uh, Rami, and of course my girlfriend Amanda, uh, as they bravely sat out by the pool today during the show uh, and enjoyed it. Uh, but top five ways to stave off realignment. Uh, and again, or stop realignment. So, okay, I don't think any of these are, are, are really all that feasible, I mean, in the current climate, but this is the best thing that we got. All right. Uh, number five, new TV deals with existing leagues uh, lengthening their grant of rights uh, and making it less likely that they would come and poach you. Uh, that's one of the things that you could do. Uh, again, uh, I don't see the TV networks rushing to renegotiate anything with anybody right now except the SEC, uh, who, of course, has two gigantic new members. Yeah. Uh, okay. ACC stuck until late thirties, right? Mid thirties. Yeah. Uh, yep. Big twelve out after twenty four, twenty five. When is the Pac twelve? Does that run up here? And they in the uh, it like the They're next couple like of years. Twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Theirs, theirs is up soon. So that they, they've got problems that like nobody's talking about. The Big Twelve kind of swooped in and, and stole their thunder there on that one. Yep. Uh, number four, rework your ex- exit clauses now. So if you're worried about your teams leaving uh, and right now you all want to stick together, go ahead and even if you feel like you've got rock-solid exit clauses, go ahead and rework those suckers right now. Because as we've seen to, to schools like Texas and Oklahoma, they don't mean much because they're still yeah. going to do it. Yeah, no, you're right. Yep. And, yeah. and we've seen a little yeah. bit of that. Number, we've seen a little bit of that. Some schools, and you know, even with what Bowlesby said, that there may be a fine line between this and that. You, you would think the Big Twelve is pretty cut and dry, but again, when it gets into the illegal work, who knows? Yeah. Uh, number three: scheduling partnerships between leagues. Uh, so, if you know, you talk about the the Big Twelve maybe making a scheduling partnership with the Pac twelve, so where those TV matchups are more enticing. Uh, and no offense to the Sun Belt Conference, but uh, I think that's part of the Big 12's problem is that those games aren't getting it done. And, you know, playing the Texas states of the world, not getting it done. Unfortunately, so the Big 12 is going to have to make some kind of big move and maybe a scheduling partnership with another league. Maybe it is the ACC gets that done uh, so that you see better games on television, thus enhancing the future TV deals that would, would be more enticing to uh, ESPN and Fox and CBS and NBC and whoever else wants to bid on it. Uh, number two, and this one is coming down the, the pipeline. I um, I was not on the show on Friday, and I'm sure you guys talked about it. Uh, Smokey, the NCAA is going to get together in the fall, and they're going to uh, vote in, in, on a new governance structure and kind of uh, maybe they're starting to admit that, hey, maybe this crap doesn't work. Maybe we're completely ineffective and feckless and worthless. So... Maybe we need a new governance structure, which should probably be a good news for anybody who has a pending case with the NCAA, considering that they don't even know if the way that they do things right now is the right way, that they're going to change things coming up here in the next couple of months. So maybe new governments, not governance by the NCAA, maybe new guidance on what they should do keeps teams from leaping to other leagues and they come up with a plan uh, that is more inclusive than just uh, what's ultimately looking like a super SEC league. Yeah, we brought this up from Friday when that story came out, and uh, that is another one to uh, look at as it might affect the landscape, which everything else seems to be doing. Yeah, and the number one way to stop realignment is to fight ESPN to the death. <laughs> just tooth and nail, fight and claw, try to stop this monopoly from happening. The problem is, and this is not just in, in the college football walk of life or athletics walk of life, we're seeing 
Um, at the turn of the 20th century, uh, Teddy Roosevelt spoke softly and carried a big stick, and he was fighting breaking up trust. He called himself the Trust Busters, and he very much believed that a free and fair and open economy and capitalism was built on pure competition and not monopolistic cronyism. Well, right now we've seen the exact opposite switch uh, in the way that our government looks at monopolies and only breaks them up as almost kind of a, well, we, we've got to stop this one. This is just... This will just make us look bad. And so if we, as a people, stand up and say, look, we don't want these big, gigantic monopolies anymore, that's what has to happen to stop things like this, not just in sports, but in every walk of life. Yeah, no question. And, and oh, by the way, Bowlesby did. He kind of doubled down a little bit on, on uh, what they're going to do, even though he said that the, they and ESPN, he and ESPN, decided not to get out in the public spat, although we know both of them want to probably cut the other one's neck and jugular. All right, Paul, good stuff. Uh, uh, 